So I'm in Excel and this works the same whether you're using the Windows or the Mac version. I can look up currency rates and then use them in calculations down here. Now I must point out that the currency rates, these might not be the exact ones, they might not be quite up to date, you might have to refresh. There is a disclaimer here about the financial market information, you can go and read more about that, but this might give you a good idea. Now what I can do is I can actually set the conversion and then I can find out the rates. I'm going to use a lookup function down here, I'm actually going to use XLOOKUP to find the rate here and then calculate it here. So let's do this. So the conversion, you can see here I've got some countries, these are just a few that I quickly picked up. So I've got United Kingdom, the Euro, Australia, Canada, China, Japan. I'm going to convert from the US to whatever currency is here. And these are the standard three letter codes for your currency. And I've got a link below so you can see what they are perhaps for the country you want to look up. The prices down here are in US dollars. So what I want to do here, and I'm going to just do this, I'm going to use my caps lock. I type in USD slash GBP, enter. I'm going to just go down to the next one. So it's going from US dollars to whatever the currency is. And you can see here that I can just quickly put these in. And then I only need to do this once. And this is Canadian dollars. And let's just do and why and to so i've done it here all from the us but you could do something say like here if you wanted to know say pounds british pounds to us dollars you would just do this okay that's the difference so let's just clear that so i've just chosen us dollars here but you can do it with any combination you could have Canadian to US, Canadian to pounds, and so on. Now here's the thing, I want it to know that these are actually going to be used for currencies. So I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to come over to my data tab across the top, and you'll see here in data types, it's got currencies. There are more, and I'm going to have a look at these in other tutorials, like geographies, you can find out populations and things like that. But look what happens when I click on currencies. It's now changed them. They've all got a symbol in front of it. I guess that's meant to look like, a, you know, like the Federal Reserve or the Bank of England. And over here, it's got a little icon that's appeared that says insert data. If I want to put the price in, that is the rate from US to whatever the currency is, I just click here and you'll see over here it says price. If I do that, it's going to fill all of them in and it has put in the correct format. Now, if it doesn't put the correct format in, let's just do it again over here. So if I highlight, let's just do this one. So I've selected one, insert data. I'm going to put price, it puts it into the next column across. Let's copy that down. Now it's done it, but it's put the pound sign in front of all of them, that's not right. So what I can do is if I click here, it's coming up with a warning. If I click on that warning, I can do update formats and do it for each of those. If I highlight a few of them, I can do update format and it fixes it for all of them. But we don't need this. Let's just clear that. So the other things I can do is let's highlight it again. It comes up with my little drop down insert data here. Let's click on it. I could put in other things. I might want to know what the high is. And I might want to put in, so it just fills it in from left to right. So let's just do the previous close. It's all coming up with pretty much the same one. I could find out things such as the percentage change and so on. You can move them afterwards. I can just take them and move them around if I like, and it doesn't affect it. Let me just clear these. 
These numbers or any of that data should refresh when you reopen it. But to make sure, back here on the data tab, just click on refresh all and it will give you the latest figures. So that's how you can get the actual rate. Now, how am I going to use it down here? Well, I'm going to use the X lookup. There is V lookup and the H lookup. I could use those, but I'm going to get this figure here and I'm going to multiply it by whatever these figures are here. It's going to look up the code across the top because they match down here as well. So let's just do that. Okay. And I am now going to formulas, lookup and reference. And you've got lookup, you've got H lookup, you've got V lookup, but there it is. X lookup is one of the newer lookups. And actually, I really like it. I've got a video on how to use it. I've got the link below so you can check that out. So let's click on X lookup. Again, this works the same way on the Mac. If you're a Mac user, you know that the function wizard comes up on the right hand side instead of as a dialog box over here, but it works exactly the same way. The lookup value is this one here. We're looking this up. So we'll find it then. I'm going into this lookup array. It's this array here. And the return array is where you've got the values. Now, if you're using VLOOKUP, you would tell it which column it is, so you would assign a number. But you can just highlight this. And you can see it's returning here 0 0.7432. So obviously over here, it's actually rounding it off just for display purposes. OK, there are other options if not found and the match mode, we're not going to worry about those. Now, one of the things we need to do here is use absolute referencing. And again, I've got a video on this. Again, the link is below. And basically it's this, this lookup value here, I'm going to be copying the formula across and then down, but I don't want the lookup value. I want it to change moving across, but I don't want it to change moving down. So the lookup value, I need to put a dollar sign in front of the 12, which is the row. So that when I copy down, it doesn't change. So basically that dollar sign locks that row. It stops it from moving. I have to do the same for the lookup array, which is here. I do not want it to move across or down. So I'm going to put dollar signs in front of each one. And you'll see some shortcuts to doing this. If you watch the video on absolute and relative referencing. And this return array, which is this one, again, we don't want it to move. So again, I'm just going to put the dollar sign. So think of the dollar sign as a lock. It has no kind of monetary value or anything to do with the currencies whatsoever. So let's click on OK. So now if I was to drag this across, I'm just going to get the rates. I don't want that. But what I really want to do is multiply it by this value here. So I've got my X lookup in here. I'm going to multiply it by this. But when I move across again, I need to think about my referencing. I do not want that column to change. It wants to stay on column B. Otherwise, if it moves across to C13, it's going to be multiplying whatever I've got in this cell. So let's put a dollar in front of that. Let's press enter and let's just copy this across. And there you have it. And you can check these values if you like, but that's how they work. And if this updated, say if I went into data, chose refresh all, it would change. There's no change today. I'm actually recording this on a public holiday. So the banks are not open, so they're probably not trading. So there you have it. That's how you can get a rate here using the standard three letter codes for the currency and then using the X look up here to actually put it into this table so you can see how much it would cost here. Obviously, this does not include taxes or anything like that. Thanks for watching. If you do like this, please do like, share and subscribe and come back for more. I have got plenty of videos on my website, jargonfreehelp.com and on the YouTube channel. Stay safe.